Hey, you can see the call queue. Is there a particular caller that you felt like starting with? I'm going to let you uh, steer. Uh, yeah, well, I, I want to go with people who've been who've been on and waiting for a little while uh, and have interesting. Uh, let's go with uh, Gavin. Yeah, he's been hanging out. Gavin on line six. Well, hello. I actually wasn't expecting to get on this early. Well, we like you more than other people, evidently. How you doing, Gavin? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm actually calling to try to find any problems with my rationale. In other words, I'm expecting there to be problems with my rationale. Okay. Shoot. Okay. okay so the the stance that I'm taking concerning the matters of a soul. Uh, I, I have not been able to expunge this concept of belief out of me, which I've actually tried to. Uh, not to say that there's any problem with believing in something, but uh, a rational mind versus a unconscious mind. Uh, when I was younger, I had a, a head injury, which might cause these uh, these problems with, with 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 my ability to expunge this belief concept. Most things that we believe are founded in a very uh, very deep unconscious uh, experience or or, or uh, very early on ages. And I have not been able to expunge this out of me, so I've kind of found a happy medium between the two. So, well, but nonetheless, I have... That's the case for the soul, because how difficult it is for you to get over is, isn't really... doesn't have any bearing on whether or not it's a particularly decent argument for a soul. Absolutely true. So uh, there's a sense called proprioception. Proprioception, uh, the... the well, it's so first of all, people get it wrong when they say, oh, you've got five senses. No, you got loads and loads and loads of senses, including like sense of balance and proci exactly. uh, proprioception is, is one of them, which is the awareness of the position of your body. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I have found in my out of body experiences, which mind you, most uh, almost all of my out of body experiences, I accept as hallucinations of the brain, basically. Uh, the concept of I've actually fallen asleep and I'm unaware that I've actually fallen asleep, which in and of itself is very peculiar. Yeah, sort of lucid dreaming and stuff like that. There's no evidence that what, what people call out-of-body experiences is in any way them actually out of their body and in every circumstance where we've set up test protocols to try to confirm this, we have failed to demonstrate the actual phenomenon. Exactly. Uh, I have some ideas as to how to try to test it out, but first I actually have to uh, need to find a way to reproduce it at any moment. Uh, I need to find a way to reproduce it 100% of the time. But it's, it's kind of important. I would like to utilize. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that's kind of important uh, for you to reproduce the phenomena uh, if you're trying to test it. It sounds like there's there's this simple physiological. Well, simple. There are uh, known physiological uh, interactions that that your mind and body are having, right? And that you're almost attributing a supernatural quality to it. That's what it, kind of what it comes across. No, see, that, that that's part and partial of the problem. I'm wanting to attribute, and the intellectual part of my mind is not wanting to. Uh, sure. I, I'm... I can't get over this desire to believe in something more. So I'm trying to find a happy medium. So the happy medium is I need to define it by science first. Well, how do you know that you can't get over this desire? That, because like, I, there are lots of things people desire. I, or, or essentially you're saying you wish it were true that there was something more and you can't not wish it were true. Okay, but at least you also recognize that when you're wishing it's true, you're acknowledging that you have no good reason to think it is. Yes. So what you're trying to get over, it isn't uh, like a, a state of cognitive dissonance where you're actually believing something in the face of acknowledging that it's not worthy of belief and that you don't believe it. You're instead saying, I don't believe this, 
but everything about me keeps wishing and hoping that it were true. Yes, essentially, yes. True. Okay. Well, I think as long as you recognize that that you're actively engaged in like wishful thinking, um, I don't know how damaging it can be because it seems like your brain already has an active kind of check valve there to keep you from perhaps going too far. But what does proprioception have to do with the soul? Okay, so proprioception, uh, forgive me if I ever mispronounce it, you know what it is that I'm talking about. Cause I've yeah, got we'll, we'll, just go, we'll just go with sense okay. of self, with the body position. Okay, so the body perception, position can be uh, tricked in a manner of speaking. Now, that being aside from the point for a moment, um, and I say only for a moment because let's say you're lying down in bed, uh, you have your eyes closed, you know everything that's around you, uh, you know the temperatures, you know the vibrations, etc., 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 and you end up coming up with a, a hallucination of it, if you will. I hate saying you end up coming up with a hallucination. That, that's not exactly how it works. No. Your brain... I, I have. Let me, let me see if I can get somewhere real quick, and if, if not, then I'll let you continue. So okay. I can cover my eyes, and I can touch my thumb and finger together without looking. And that's because I know the position of those, but it's also because of years i'm 51 now so it's years and years and years and years and years of being familiar with that and it doesn't matter for example i study suffer from diabetic neuropathy so my pinkies are essentially numb from the outside edge into about halfway into this middle finger is is numb and tingly um that doesn't stop me from being able to touch them and it doesn't seem remotely extraordinary that i can also tell roughly where my hands are or anything else i play a lot and, and have played for years first person shooters at the highest level and so I have a, a fairly high sense of spatial awareness, even in non-real spaces. So once I understand a map layout, I can um, carry a model of it in my head and know based on what I heard, what happened, what direction or a rocket or whatever came from, exactly where other people are on the map. I can do the same thing here at my house. Like, unless somebody else comes along and puts stuff in different places, I can blindfold myself and make my way through my house really easily uh, because I'm, I have a, an internal memory based model of my house, which is incredibly accurate from years of living here. If, if this was the first time I'd ever been in this, this space, I would not be as aware of the features of this house as I am. And so how is it remotely remarkable that after 51 years of having this particular body and being with it all the time through every change, that I have a really good sense of where this body is. If after living in my house for just five years or running through an in-game map a couple of times, I have a really good sense where you could do that blindfolded. Well, I'm not talking about a simple memory. I'm talking about an actual hallucination such as a dream the brain is capable of manifesting hallucinations. A dream is a hallucination in and of itself. Is it, Can we is agree it, on that? Is a dream a hallucination? Uh, I'm not, yeah. I've never heard anyone describe it like that. I mean, that, I mean, I, I guess if, if that's where you want to go with it, fine. Uh, but I'm not sure kind of how that helps get you to your conclusion because that's kind of what I, i've been lost on is to how how are you how are you making these connections uh even though it seems like you you rationalize yourself out of it in a sense but i'm not really sure how you even initially made these connections uh to be honest oh and, and i have to admit i'm not going full-blown because there's a limited time frame uh more of a full-blown concept is that there are several different levels of hallucinations but that in and of itself, so I'm trying to go step by step, which makes me sound more like one of your regular callers. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Gavin, as soon as yeah. you start talking about, like, levels of hallucination, all, all, all a hallucination is 
is an instance where you have a perception of something that isn't accurately mapped to reality and that isn't necessarily tied to reality. Your sense of self isn't a hallucination because that's directly tied to reality. You have nerve endings that tell you where things are and what's hot and what's cold and whether there's air blowing and things like that. You have all, all of that stuff. But it doesn't matter whether or not there's levels of hallucination. Are there any confirmed levels of hallucination that aren't still merely products of the mind? Confirmed, absolutely not. That, that's one of the reasons why I was calling in, was to try to figure out what I have as of right now, what the flaws are. I was hoping to get into some of my I, hopeful scientific uh, experiments. Um, the, flaws, the flaws are simple. There's no evidence that anything about hallucinations requires or necessarily points to or makes the case stronger that there is a soul. Right. So that that's if if you want to, you know, if you want to relegate it to the, the realm of science, um, the fact that you can't really repeat this phenomenon accurately or at least somewhat on a regular basis enough for you to test, that should tell you that you may want to reevaluate the original observation, right? Because you've you've you made some type of observation about something in reality and you've drawn your conclusion as to what it you know possibly might be. And, and it sounds like it's a tentative uh, uh, conclusion, but at what point do you encounter a scenario that would disabuse you of this? I think is, is my question. Because if we're talking about science, there has to be some scenario or scenarios in which um, your original observation is inaccurate. Well, you specified something that is completely legitimate, but I do have some level of accuracy. I have not mastered it yet, and there is the difficulty. So what I was hoping to do was master the, experiment, the experience and then go to a uh, sensory deprivation chamber and complete the experiment until how, I know. Hang on, hang on. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. How will that complete the experiment? You, you, you have in your head something that is, oh, I haven't mastered this yet, but I'm hoping to master it. And then when I do master it, I'll go to a sensor deprivation tank to complete the experiment. How the hell would you have any idea what would complete the experiment uh, for something that you haven't mastered and haven't well-defined? I mean, what, what exactly is your methodology that you're establishing a protocol where you know what's going to complete the experiment? The experiment that I've established, that doesn't mean that it's a verifiable uh, experiment. That doesn't mean something that it is uh, something that will prove everything to everybody. It is something that will allow me to go, okay, now I can take it to the next step. If, if you're just trying to convince yourself, then don't even worry about science. Uh, science isn't about trying to convince yourself. I can convince myself without putting on this lab coat, without going to a lab or doing anything. <laughs> Right. That the reason I go to the lab that I go to is because I think there's a particular phenomenon that happens uh, within a particular plant. Right. There is an enzyme that does something to a molecule. And I need to be able to show that this hypothetical gene is the thing that is doing what I think it's doing. There is a scenario in which that is not the case. And there are scenarios in which that is the case. And so these experiments aren't for me to convince myself. I'm already convinced. I need to convince other people, and that's what it's about. Yes, I'm trying to complete an exper a personalized, all right, so utilizing the scientific method, I shouldn't say it in that fashion because I don't even presume to know scientific methods. Utilizing what I know of scientific methods, I have to be capable of producing something that is verifiable, something that is reproducible, something that can be removed from all my own personal senses. If I can remove it from all of my own personal senses, if I can show other people how to reproduce it, et cetera, et cetera, then I have something that I can continue on with. Nonetheless, the whole reason for me doing it anyways is that it curbs my uh, depression in and of itself, in which case I want to continue doing it, even if it is not what I'm hoping it to be. So, even if it's not what I'm hoping it to be, I'm going to continue in this. 
uh, I am hoping that it is something more. But for me to be able to prove that it's something more, I have to be able to at least get past certain obstacles for me to be able to present it to the world and say, here is my findings. Let me take it to scientists. Let me show them how to do something. Let me show them blah, 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 to where they can potentially reproduce it. Well, um, good luck to you. Uh, I'll, I, I can't wait to, to read your research uh, when you get there, man. Uh, best of luck. Uh, other than that, I, I don't really have anything else. Well, I was actually calling for the hope that you would actually find some kind of screw up in my rationale, but I haven't even gotten to the rationale yet of, of the proprietor. Uh, I never. Well, well, I I thought that we identified a number of problems. Uh, abs uh, go ahead. You, you take a few seconds and give us your rationale, and if we. If it's not already covered in, in what our concerns are, I mean, it's like if somebody calls me and says, hey, I have this sensation and I have this desire and I fully acknowledge that this desire doesn't necessarily tie to anything that's true. And the thing that I'm perceiving with this sensation uh, doesn't necessarily result in the conclusion that I'd like it to. And I'm going to study this and become a master. And then at some point I'm going to conclude the test. Um, but the test isn't going to necessarily confirm the thing that I wanted to confirm. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? It, it's like you, you have some, your methodology is not methodology. It is, I'm going to keep exploring this and then I'm going to wind up with some conclusion that isn't, it's like you can't get from A to B until you demonstrate. Like, let's say that we found something about uh, proprioception that is, not accounted for by any mechanism in the brain. How do we know whether or not that's because it's something external or if it's some function of the brain that we have yet to identify? And even if it was something external, how would we then show that it's a soul or the, the type of soul that you're looking for? It's like you haven't even done the basics to figure out how you could get from A to B until you can, it, it, it's, it's wishful thinking all the way down. You wish there's this, and now you might as well just be wishing that whatever process you go through gets you somewhere. That ain't science. Well, I don't, I don't think that the soul is necessarily uh, separate from the body or separate from uh, physicality. You think the soul is a, is a physical entity as, as a part of the body? Yes. Really? How did you come there's to that nothing conclusion? Nothing I... I Okay, well, mind you, I'm utilizing the term soul, but I'm, which is, is a difficulty because of all the baggage that comes along with it. Uh, but uh, I didn't want to go into it in this fashion. Uh, in Deuteronomy, it makes reference that uh, the neshama which is the highest level of soul that human beings can attain to unless you're Jewish, which means that you can attain to something higher. But the highest level of soul that you can attain to is what's referred to as a neshama. And it references that the neshama can be killed. In other words, everybody who is purporting the idea that the soul is eternal is really not paying attention to what Christian or Jewish scripture specifies. Now, whatever Hindu scripture specifies or Buddhist scripture specifies, that I'm definitely nowhere, anywhere knowledgeable about. Uh, but there is nothing that I have seen within my own experiences that specify that a soul, if a soul exists, and I'm hopeful that a soul exists, uh, can necessarily exist outside of the body. Okay, so That's your response to my question of how you know that the soul exists and that it's part of the body was that you've not seen anything say that it's not separate from the body. Is that a summation? That is not separate from the body, yes. Okay, if it's not separate from the body, then how is it how is it not plausible to say that the thing that you're trying to label 
soul is just an amalgamation of functions of the brain. A hallucination. No, that's not what he said. That's completely. You're right. I shouldn't have spent. I, I I wasn't trying to be disrespectful whenever I specified it in that fashion. Uh, the concept of hallucination that I was trying to get into, I'm, I'm a very big proponent well, of, of I, I'm, no, I'm no longer remotely interested because now we're at the point where essentially you've called in to, to talk about an argument for a soul, but the, the soul that you're defining isn't consistent with any traditional notions of a soul. You've just decided to take things that as far as we can tell, are products of the brain and define them as a soul. According to the Bible, according to the Torah, they... Why do I give a fuck about the Bible or the Torah? The Bible or the Torah, by the way, both advocate for the, for a potential notion of a soul that is separate from the body and persists after the body is dead. The Torah, no. The Torah isn't very clear on what potentially happens after death because it just says stuff like, uh, he he died and slept with his fathers. However, it does have the notion of people interacting after they they were dead. You know the, the people. Torah were... does. All right. Are you, the Torah does. All right. So if we're only talking about the Pentateuch, probably not. But. Well, technically speaking, I'm not even none wanting this, to None of this that. fucking matters. None of this matters, Gavin. Why the, Why should I give a shit what the Torah says? Technically, you shouldn't. There. That's it. All right. And technically speaking, I shouldn't. Yep. Thanks for the call. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> So oh, I've got this notion of a soul, and it's not really consistent with any religion. And I'm just going to go with the Torah because the Torah really doesn't say that much about the soul. And the less you say about the soul, the more compelling my notion sounds. Well, you, you know, you know, Matt. The reason I'm six feet tall uh, is because of the dragon soul within me. Right? Mm. I have a dragon soul. Uh, you know, you. I can't really define what it is, but if you read uh, volume 26 of the anime fairy tale. In the manga version, you, you'll, you know. It makes sense. It's like I, the whole time I was watching Tiger King on Netflix, I kept expecting Charlie Sheen to show up, you know, talking about Tiger's blood. Yeah. Be because that's the level of bat shittery we were dealing with out there. I'm only on episode uh, six of Tiger King. And uh, yeah. All right. Yeah.